on the hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30 minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners. So we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases, especially written, for people learning English. Today on the program, Ashley and I will bring you stories along with Brian Lynn. Later, we will present our American history series, The Making of a Nation. But first, an increase in the number of people in China infected with bird flu this year is raising concern among experts. They say an earlier bird flu strain appears to have changed and may be more infectious to people. The World Health Organization says China has reported 21 human infections with the H5N6 strain of bird flu in 2021. That compares with only five reported cases last year. The numbers are much lower than the hundreds infected with H7N9 in 2017. But the infections are serious with many severely ill and at least six dead. The increase in human cases in China this year is of concern. It's a virus that causes high mortality, said Tais Kauka. He teaches at the Erasmus University Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. The WHO said in a statement earlier this month that most of those infected with the H5N6 virus had come into contact with poultry. The WHO noted that there are no confirmed cases of human-to-human -human virus spread. The statement added that further investigation was urgently required to understand the risk and the increase in human infections. While human H5N6 cases have been reported, no outbreaks of H5N6 have been reported in poultry in China since February 2020. China is the world's biggest poultry producer and top producer of ducks. These animals act as carriers for many flu viruses. The Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention could not be reached for comment on the rise in H5N6 human cases. But a study published on its website in September said the increasing spread of H5N6 is a serious threat to the poultry industry and human health. Bird flu viruses continuously spread in domestic and wild birds, but rarely infect people. However, the increase in changes of the viruses is a major concern. Experts worry that a variant, or new version, of the virus that spreads easily between people could cause a pandemic. The largest number of H5N6 infections have been in China's southwestern Sichuan province. Cases have also been reported in neighboring Chongqing and Guangxi, as well as Guangdong, Anhui, and Hunan. At least 10 cases were caused by viruses very similar to the H5N8 virus that struck poultry farms across Europe last winter and killed wild birds in China. That suggests the latest H5N6 infections in China may be a new variant. Tais Kauka said, It could be that this variant is a little more infectious to people, or there could be more of this virus in poultry at the moment, and that's why more people are getting infected. 
Four of the people who developed the virus in Sichuan raised poultry at home and had been in contact with dead birds, according to a September report by China's CDC. Another had bought a duck from a live poultry market a week before developing signs of illness. Philippe Klaas is with the Food and Agriculture Organization. He said China vaccinates poultry against bird flu, but he said the vaccine used last year may only partly protect against new viruses. He added that the vaccine may prevent large outbreaks, but still permit the virus to keep spreading. China's Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs did not respond to a Reuters request for comment. Japanese-style gardens first gained attention in the United States at the 1893 World Exposition in Chicago, Illinois. Over 120 years later, they continue to be a great part of American garden design. Today, there are more than 200 Japanese-style public gardens in the country. The North American Japanese Garden Association reports: Japanese-style gardens bring together indoor and outdoor spaces, says Asher Brown of New Jersey. He creates Japanese-like gardens for people in the United States. He did his training in Kyoto, Japan. One reason that gardens are so successful in Japan is that the house garden relationship is set up to be so integrated, Brown said. He added that gardens surround the house, so it's as if your living space extends out much further, he said. Japanese garden design in the U.S. has moved beyond the commonly known features such as special lights. Called lanterns, and imported Japanese cherry and maple trees, says Sadafumi Uchiyama. He oversees a Japanese garden in Portland, Oregon. He is a third-generation gardener from southern Japan. Over time, Japanese gardens in the U.S. changed to look more authentic. This happened in part because of more widely available books on the subject, Uchiyama said. Brown said that in Japan, garden spaces are linked with indoor spaces. Wherever a person looks out from their home, a garden should look almost like a painting. He said the idea of bringing the beauty of nature into daily lives is an important idea in Japan. He notes that gardeners in Japan pay special attention to the beauty of rocks and stones. John Powell is a garden builder from Weatherford, Texas, who also received training in Japan. He said Japanese gardens appeal to him because of their strong connection between indoor and outdoor space. He said that traditionally, outdoor landscaping in the United States was very disconnected from indoor spaces, but today, he said, more Americans like the idea of connecting the indoors and the outdoors. There have been changes among Japanese-style gardens in the U.S. in recent years. In the past. The trees and plants chosen were often native to Japan, but today the aim is to use plants that grow well in local environments. It's very possible to create a wonderful Japanese garden using all native plants, Brown said. 
Astronomers say they have found evidence for the first time of a planet orbiting a star outside our Milky Way galaxy. The evidence was observed by a telescope operated by the American Space Agency, NASA. It is called the Chandra X ray Observatory. NASA says the orbiting observatory is the world's most powerful X ray telescope. NASA recently announced that the observatory might have discovered a new planet in the galaxy known as Messier 51 or M51. The galaxy is popularly known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. The research recently appeared in the publication Nature Astronomy. The possible planet is considered an exoplanet. These are planets that orbit a star outside of our own solar system. NASA says that so far, more than 4,500 exoplanets have been discovered and are considered confirmed. Thousands of other candidate exoplanets have been detected but require additional study. But all of these have been observed in the Milky Way galaxy. And NASA says almost all of them are less than about 3,000 light-years from Earth. Scientists estimate that an exoplanet in the M51 galaxy would be much farther, about 28 million light-years away. Exoplanets are hard for telescopes to identify. This is because the bright light of the stars they orbit can hide them. The identification process involves searching for drops in the light levels of stars. Such drops could be caused by a planet passing in front of a star. This method has been used in past observations by NASA telescopes to confirm the presence of planets crossing in front of stars. These movements of planets partly blocking light from stars are called transits. NASA's latest finding is based on a transit detected by the Chandra X-ray Observatory. But unlike other NASA telescopes, which search for drops in observable light, Chandra is designed to detect X-rays. The observatory searched for drops in the brightness of X-rays received from X-ray bright binaries, NASA said in a statement. These binaries are defined as bright systems that usually contain a neutron star or black hole pulling in gas from a closely orbiting star. A neutron star is the unimaginably dense result of a supergiant star that has collapsed on itself. The researchers said the activity of binaries causes the material near the neutron star or black hole to become superheated and glow in X-rays. However, the area producing the X-rays is small. It is so small that a planet passing in front of it could block most or all the X-rays, they added. This method could permit exoplanets to be detected at much greater distances than other light-searching systems that depend on optical telescopes the NASA statement said. Roseanne DeStefano is an astrophysicist at the Center for Astrophysics, Harvard and Smithsonian in Cambridge, Massachusetts. 
She said in a statement that the research team is seeking to open up a whole new arena for finding other worlds by searching for planet candidates at X-ray wavelengths. Such methods could be used in the future to discover other new planets in distant galaxies, De Stefano added. The researchers say more data will be needed to confirm the observation as an actual extragalactic exoplanet. They say one problem is that the planet candidate has a large orbit. This means it is not expected to pass in front of its binary partner for at least 70 years, blocking any confirmation attempts any time soon. However, one co-writer of the study said the team is very confident with its findings. We know we are making an exciting and bold claim, so we expect that other astronomers will look at it very carefully, said Julia Bernson of Princeton University in New Jersey. She added, We think we have a strong argument, and this process is how science works. I'm Brian Lynn. Welcome to The Making of a Nation, American History in VOA Special English. Years of disagreement between the North and the South finally burst into civil war in April of 1861. Seven states in the South had withdrawn from the Union. Soldiers of the new Confederate States of America shelled the Union base at Fort Sumter, built on an island in Charleston Harbor in South Carolina. They captured Fort Sumter after two days. President Abraham Lincoln asked the states of the Union for 75,000 soldiers to help end the Southern Rebellion. Northern states quickly sent forces to Washington. But border states, those between the North and the South, refused to send any. Some prepared to leave the Union and join the Confederacy. Steve Ember and Shirley Griffith describe the first days of the American Civil War. The first state to secede after the start of the Civil War was Virginia. It was an important state because of its location. It was just across the Potomac River from Washington. Virginia's decision to secede cost the Union a military commander of great ability. He was Robert E. Lee. Lee was a Virginian and had served in the United States Army for more than thirty years. Lincoln asked him to be head of the Army when General Winfield Scott retired. Lee said he could not accept the job. He said he opposed secession and loved the Union. But, he said, he could not make war on his home state. Lee resigned from the army. He did not really want to fight at all. But soon after his resignation, he agreed to command the forces of Virginia. Virginia's forces moved quickly after the state seceded. A group of 1,000 soldiers went to Harper's Ferry, Virginia, where the Union Army had a gun factory and arsenal. It was the same town where abolitionist John Brown had tried to start a slave rebellion a few years before. The United States force at Harper's Ferry 
was small. The soldiers could not defend the town against the Virginians, so they left. Before marching away, the soldiers set fire to the gun factory and arsenal. The fire did not destroy all the equipment at the gun factory. When the Virginians captured the town, they sent the equipment south, where it was used to make guns for Confederate soldiers. Virginia's forces also moved against the United States' biggest Navy base, which was at Norfolk, Virginia. Once again, the Union force withdrew. Before leaving, it burned every building and sank every ship. President Lincoln was becoming increasingly worried about Virginia's military moves. He was afraid Confederate forces in Virginia might try to capture Washington in the first days of the war. After all, the Confederate Secretary of War had declared that the Confederate flag would fly over the Capitol building before the 1st of May. Washington was not strongly defended. It did not have enough soldiers to stop any real attempt by Confederate forces to seize the city. It was extremely important to get more soldiers to Washington as quickly as possible. Thousands of men were on their way to Washington, but they could not get there quickly. Troop trains had to pass through the state of Maryland to get to Washington from the north. Many people in the state supported the Confederacy. The governor, however, did not. He refused to call a meeting of the state legislature. He was afraid it might vote to secede. He wanted to keep Maryland neutral. The first troop train from the north passed through Baltimore, Maryland, without incident. The second train was not so lucky. A mob blocked the rail line and threw stones at the train. Shots were fired. Four soldiers and twelve civilians were killed. State and city officials met to discuss the trouble. They agreed that there would be even more violence in the future. So they ordered railroad bridges outside Baltimore destroyed. No more trains from the north could reach Washington that way. President Lincoln told the officials of the great need to get more soldiers to the capital. He agreed that they did not have to pass through Baltimore but he wanted them to be able to land safely at Annapolis, a city on the Chesapeake Bay. Landing at Annapolis would be easy. Getting to the capital would not. Supporters of the Confederacy had damaged trains, rail lines, and bridges between the two cities. The first soldiers to land at Annapolis had to repair everything as they moved ahead. Still, with all these difficulties, 10,000 troops made it to Washington in the first few weeks of the Civil War. The city and government were safe. President Lincoln worried about the presence of Confederate supporters in Maryland. He knew they would continue to be a threat to the movement of Union troops and supplies. Lincoln wanted to restrict the activities of the Confederate supporters, so he took an extremely unusual step for an American president. He put much of Maryland under military rule. He gave military officers the power to arrest civilians believed to be hostile to the Union. And he gave them the power to hold these suspects without trial. This order suspended two of the basic rights under the Constitution. One was the right to go free 
until officially charged, and the other was the right to a speedy trial. The Chief Justice of the United States wrote a letter to President Lincoln. He said the Constitution did not give the President the power to suspend the rights of citizens. Lincoln disagreed. He felt the situation facing the Union permitted him to take such strong measures. If he had not acted, he believed, Maryland would have seceded. Maryland did not withdraw, but North Carolina, Tennessee, and Arkansas did. There were now eleven states in the Confederacy. There could be two more. No one knew how long Kentucky and Missouri would remain in the Union. Both supported the Southern rebels. President Lincoln treated Kentucky carefully. He did not want the state to secede, nor did he want it to remain neutral. Kentucky reached from the mountains of Virginia to the Mississippi River. As a neutral state, Kentucky could block northern troops from much of the south. Lincoln wanted it firmly on the side of the Union. The president did not use force in Kentucky, as he had done in Maryland. Instead, he sent people to Kentucky to organize support for the Union. Newspapers were urged to publish pro-Union statements. Home Guard forces were formed. They received their weapons and supplies from Lincoln's administration. Lincoln hoped that in time these efforts would win Kentucky's support for his war effort. Convention to decide the question. A majority of the delegates refused to vote for secession. The governor organized state soldiers. The Lincoln administration organized home guard forces. The two sides clashed several times. Some civilians were killed. The United States Army finally seized government buildings in the state capital. They forced state officials, including the governor, to flee. Missouri would remain in the Union. The capital of the Confederate States of America was located far south in Montgomery, Alabama. Within the first few weeks of the Civil War, the Confederate Congress voted to move the capital farther north to Richmond, Virginia. They believed Virginia would be an important battlefield in the war. They were right. Two days before Confederate President Jefferson Davis left for Richmond, Union troops invaded Virginia. They left Washington, crossed the Potomac River, and seized the towns of Arlington and Alexandria. No shots were fired. Confederate forces withdrew as Union troops moved forward. Within a month, thousands more Union soldiers were in Virginia. They were to prepare for a major battle at a place called Manassas Junction, or Bull Run. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. 